This is the Knock. It's one of the two farms where I grew up, where my father farmed for years and years and where my brothers and sisters used to call home. And it's where I imagined I would probably spend the rest of my life looking after cattle and sheep. It wasn't to be and here is the story of why exactly that is and why I'm a hoof trimmer now. If you haven't subscribed, smash that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Hello, welcome to the Hoof GP YouTube channel. Today I'm going to tell you a story about how I became a hoof trimmer and how I became very, very rich. So this is a story about treachery, greed, happiness in my life. So I grew up as a farmer's son. We had two farms, about 660, 670 acres between the two, which is worth somewhere between three and five million right now. I remember the house we lived in, it was called Bermeal and I loved it. It was idyllic. It was settled in these trees with a pond right out the front and the farmstead and all round about. And I remember when I was slightly older, I used to sit in the back of the motorbike and travel around the farm with my dad helping him every day. I loved it. I really, really did. And so did my brothers and sisters. It was the best playground ever. It was really, really, really good. Then things changed. So just hold that thought a second. You guys always ask me, how do I remove blocks? I'm just gonna show you. So we're just gonna remove the block so that she's walking perfectly. So this is obviously a wooden block that we're gonna remove. She's had an ulcer or something in here that's totally cured. Bada bing, bada bang. Super important to remove these blocks once they're not being used because if you don't remove them, this claw here is gonna get problems in it because the whole point of routine trimming is to make sure that the two digits have the same amount of weight between them two so that one isn't overburdened. By leaving the block on too long, it would be overburdened and it would cause an ulcer. The farm got into money troubles, as lots of farms did then, and probably to be fair, right now do too. Dad's mood just deepened and deepened. He became really angry, especially towards mum, and things from there just spiralled out of control. Eventually, their marriage started breaking apart, and that meant our family was breaking apart too, which, these things happen, they happen to everybody. It was what happened next that really, really caused the problems. You see, because dad was in such a bad place, not because of mum, because of his own doing and his demons in his head, we all have them. Dad was flitting between Scotland and Yorkshire and Northern England, and he wasn't paying attention to the farm. So things just took a nose dive. Then one day in uh, June 1997, I was standing in the kitchen and I got a phone call to tell me that dad had been found dead in a river. My mother remarried. She married a guy called Davy McGarvey, who I owe my hoof trimming career pretty much to, but that's another story. So after a long drawn out affair, after dad was buried, obviously the will came to be, didn't it? In dad's wisdom and his mental troubles, he'd actually split everything he owned between 10 of his friends who he hadn't seen for over 25 years and barely knew anymore. Almost all of the friends actually contacted my mum and they said, nope, we don't want this, this should go to his children. Me and my two brothers and two sisters. The only trouble was, it turned out that all the money was tied up in the farm, but that was fine. We could sell the farms or keep them and farm them for ourselves. However, dad was in a partnership with his mother, my grandmother. And there was a clause in that partnership, assuming that my grandmother would pass away first, that the other partner could buy whoever had passed away out for £10, about $12. So granny dearest did the decent thing. She sold the farm for a princely sum and pocketed the cash. These things happen in life and it took us quite a long time to kind of realise that, well, if that's the way you want to be, that's the way you want to be. The farm was never ours to begin with. It was her father's and hers. So 
being upset about it and pissed off is not really going to get you anywhere. And it's kind of taught me in life that if you want something, you've got to work really hard for it. So me, my brothers and sisters, ended up with the pricely or princely sum um, for my father, having passed away on a couple of farms, of about £1.60, which is about $2. So, yeah, I'll be honest. Didn't spend it all at once. You don't want to go out rushing and spending this money hastily. I think I bought a Mars bar and Twix thing. But like I say, this led me on a path to becoming a hoof trimmer. I always wanted to be a farmer. That dream was never going to happen anymore. And my mother married a hoof trimmer. So having grown up on the farm with my brothers and sisters, having dreams of rearing cattle and making a living for myself for the rest of my life, they'd all been dashed with the death of my father and my grandmother, deciding it would be a good idea to sell the farm to line our own pockets. And I'm genuinely not bitter about that at all. It taught me so much in life that if I want something, I gotta go out there and work for it as hard as I possibly can. And kind of the reason for telling you guys this story is the crowdfunding thing. So I had quite a few negative, I say quite a few, like three or four negative messages, basically saying about the crowdfunding and I've got a car in the drive, why not sell that? Yada, yada, yada. The reason for the crowdfunding is I got so many DMs and so many comments telling me that I should go for it. I should go for a crowdfunding thing and get a new crush that I thought, mm, I don't know, should I, should I not? I asked loads of people their opinion. They all said they should. Um, so eventually I thought, right, I'll do it. And I just want everybody to know I've never, ever in my life wanted something for nothing. I've never had a benefit in my life. Never had a bursary. Uh, I have had a loan, sorry. Never had a bursary or a grant or anything like that um because i believe that if i want something i need to go and work hard for it when this came along that's why it was so hard to really really sort of get on board with it and i just want to let the 154 people who have donated or given to the gofundme page that i am going to push this now guys because i kind of owe it to you guys because you've already invested in it and i think that's amazing it really really is and if i don't push it anymore then what am i going to do with what's accumulated so far so guys go check out the gofundme page read all the way through it about my story and my journey through being a hoof trimmer and getting to where i am today like i say go and read it you don't need to donate at all i really 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 don't want you to do donate if you don't want to i'm not asking for that just go and check it out see what you think donate don't donate whatever i'm just really glad that you guys keep watching the videos and i can't thank you enough for that it's amazing it really is so there's the story of how me and my brothers and sisters and my mother sold a farm and pocketed about one <laughs> pound